Hello and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Kim and I love yarn, like really love yarn. And this channel talks about my love of yarn through my knitting and crochet adventures. And if you're returning, thank you so much for coming back for today's video, where we are going to be talking about some of the things that I completed and what I'm working on as much as I can talk about it because I'm working on a top secret project that I can't really talk about for the hooker versus hooker challenge. And I also want to talk about some plans for the month of April because I just have all these things that I want to make <sighs> and I never have enough time. So I think what we'll start off with first is finished objects because really this is not going to take very long friends. I'm sorry. <laughs> I have one finished object that you have not seen on the channel and that is these and I haven't even really snipped my end yet but we'll talk about that. I do have a video on this. I did finish this in the month of February and this is the Mesa hat. It's a Tony Lipsy Tunisian crochet project. I'm going to link the video down below if you're interested in it because there's a whole video just about this one hat because I was able to modify a Tony pattern and dare I say improve it. I was kind of starstruck when she actually watched the video and commented. I had a little bit of a fangirl moment. I'm not gonna lie. I was totally shocked by that, but very grateful. I thought that was very cool for her. So the next thing that I have to show you, and I have my notes right here, so I'm sorry I have to look away, and that is my mittens. These are the Socks versus Fingerless Mitts. Basically, it's a pattern that starts off kind of like you're making a sock. Okay, and yeah. I had to pause and I had to go snip the ends because... <laughs> I feel so bad about showing an object and saying, hey, it's finished, and all the ends are just coming out like vomit. So I did snip them, but they were sewn in already, and I had already blocked this. And I always sew in my ends before I block. That way, during the blocking process, your knitting, especially natural fibers, will expand and relax, and that way the ends don't get sucked in so far that they pop out. This allows them to go to their natural resting state in the knitting, and then you don't have to worry about them popping out. But I do love these. This is a fingering weight yarn. It is from Mustache Yarns, and this is in the colorway of Very Hobbit Christmas. I cast these on in December for Advent, and I just now finished them. Actually, I finished them in February 29th, but I really love how they turned out. They did use 232 yards, which is 53 grams, and they are pretty on spot as far as the striping. I'm trying not to get my watch caught up. I did make them rather long because I wanted them long, and they're kind of fitted because I wanted these to be able to wear up under a long sleeve t-shirt, which is what I like to wear a lot in the winter. My watch can still fit under there. I really should have went in and like made a little spot for the watch to pop out. There are some fingerless mitts like that already designed patterns on Ravelry and I need to make some. I love fingerless mitts because I do have plates and pins in my arms. You can see my scar right there. There's one on that arm and I have another one on the other arm that it looks a little worse actually than I have nine pins in one and eight pins in the other and then a plate in each arm. So because of that I do get cramping in my arms especially in the winter and also even in the summer because I'm in Alabama and it gets so warm here and so humid. AC is constantly running in most places and that cold air just kind of makes your hands cramp and this helps. But they are almost perfectly even with the striping. So I'm very proud of that. But this is her perfectly paired sock set. So when you order her yarns, if you get the perfectly paired set, they're already split into two cakes for you. Well, in two mini hanks, you have to wind them. But they're split perfectly so that once you wind them and you start knitting, if you can start at the same exact spot on both of them, you're going to have perfectly matching objects like this and I love that. I tried to even get my thumbs to perfectly match and I was able to do so. Just love them. Love them so much. So the pattern that I used, I can't remember if it had a thumb or not. It did have a thumb. I don't think I did my thumb as long as the pattern called for, if I remember correctly. And I did make my thumb a little bit bigger. I like a, I like a bigger um, thumb gusset, which is what this is called. I think the pattern says to go to like 21 inches and I think I went to 25, 26. 
that's just because it's more comfortable for my hands. I do have rather large hands. I'm like six feet tall, so big hands just kind of come with that territory. And another thing that I noted was to talk about was the way that, um, where was I going? <laughs> okay, sorry, I had like a major brain halt where my brain just went, <laughs> it just quit. Another thing I wanted to say was I did do that the pattern did not say, and that is decreases to make it more fitted around my wrist. I do that, number one, because I think it just gives a better fit, and it kind of keeps it staying in place, and you can kind of see where my decreases are, like here's one right here, but you can't really tell there's one there. I did them so that they kind of wrap around. They're just not all in the same place. I mean, you can just do them all on the sides. I wanted them to be kind of even, and I like how they fit a little bit more. That's why they have the tapered look right there. But I really love how these turned out. I did have 207 yards left of the yarn because it's a 400 and 440 yard skein. And so with that leftover yarn, it's naturally going to go through my yarn bits process. And for me, that is putting a square on my Cozy Memories blanket. So this is actually my Cozy Memories blanket. And I... I love this thing. This thing, I, I call it that because it, it does have a lot of cozy memories. Almost all of these squares are from previous projects that I've done through my knitting and crochet. And they're all number one sock weight, fingering weight yarns. Some of these were gifted to me. Some of these, a few of these I got from trading leftover minis with someone else. But for the most part, these are all things that I've just used in my own projects. Like this right here, this green, was my very first pair of socks that I've ever knit. And that was like my second pair of socks I've ever knit. And then once they, I get done with this, I'll start to say once they leave this project, they really don't ever leave. Once I get my square made in this with them, and, and to, <laughs> I'm kind of embarrassed to show this. So, um, Bef while they're waiting to get into this project, the yarn goes into here. This is my to be added to my blanket basket. And it's a little absurd. So eventually, they'll, they'll get out of this basket. And once that leftovers get out of that basket, they then go to a barn raising square if I have enough left over. And then my intention to use with the barn raising squares is to make this big blanket later on and then maybe do like the crochet around them to join them. I don't know. I'm kind of on the fence with my barn raising squares. I have a bunch of them. I think I've shown them on this channel before. I think they're on a short maybe. So once I get done making a barn raiser square, I've made my cozy memory square. Then they go to another project and that is my little bitty socks because I want to have a whole bunch of these to make a garland for somewhere in here. So that is, that's how I handle my sock yarn scraps for the post part. Now, often I will use them in other projects because why not? They're fun. And I actually store all my sock yarn kind of off camera. There's this big glass tube. And then I store some in little plastic containers. And I like to sort them by color if I have them in the containers. Or if not, they just kind of go in this big glass tube. So as far as what I'm working on right now, <laughs> it's not a lot. I'm going to go ahead and tell you. I have really been consumed with my hookers versus hooker project. And I can't even really talk about it, which is... It's really, really hard because I really like what I'm making. I think it's, I think it's going to be super cute, but I can't talk about it. I would say that I am, I'm at the probably halfway mark, which is good because we're a little over halfway through the month and I have to have this completely completed by the end of the month so I can beat Mad Mimi and Alaskan Jan and Jamie from... I can't think of Jamie's channel. Jamie crafts some something. I'm so sorry. I'm going to put that right here. I did remember your name though. <laughs> it's pretty. I'm horrible with names. But since I can't show you my actual project, what I can show you is the yarn that I will be using. So in an effort to save money, 
because that's very important. I'm trying to downsize my acrylic stash by using it as much as I can before I go to Ikea. I really want to go to Ikea and get the bookcases to finish my wall of yarn. There will be a skinny bookcase that goes over here in this corner that's going to look just like this one. And it's going to hold all my crochet books. And then I'm going to do a couple of the half billy bookcases that are not as tall to go up under the windows to hold the rest of the yarn. Because right now they're in these plastic drawers and I'm not loving it at all. These drawers collapse, so in a way to try to keep them from collapsing and still using space on top right now, I've put like boards on top of them. It's, it's just, yeah. But I'm grateful that I have them. But I'm wanting to work through my acrylic yarns because I don't want to say I'm a yarn snob. I definitely think that acrylic yarns and all yarns have a place and time, but I do have a hard time using a lot of acrylic yarn. I've known about Cinnamon Stitches for a while, but I've never actually just kind of sat down and watched one of her videos. I have a really hard time finding time to sit down and listen and watch a video anymore. Like it's just been really hard, I'd say, this whole year, really, since 2024. But she was talking about, she was doing a um, review of some, and I'll tag her down below if you don't know who she is. She has a, a lot of videos. She was doing a review of some ombre yarns and she was talking about Red Heart and how it makes her hands like itch and break out. And I'm like, no way, because I have a serious issue with that. I do have atopic dermatitis, but when I'll use ac some acrylic yarns, I don't know if it's material the plastic or if it's the dye that they use or what but it eats my hands up like it's nobody's business and they will itch so bad in my sleep that I will actually scratch them in my sleep and pull off skin which is kind of gross I know so I have this like prescribed I have this prescription hang it's actually not even hand cream it's like a really really strong stairway cream it's so strong that i have to put it on my hands at night and then put on plastic gloves so i don't put it on my face it's crazy and if i do that for a couple of nights it usually helps clear it up and you can kind of see i don't try to show my hands a lot but it's definitely callous because of all the years of using acrylic yarns and my hands would just crack and that is right where these yarns go over when i tension my yarn so I was shocked to see that I'm not the only person that has issues with this. Sometimes the I Love This yarn does it, but it's a lot softer to me than the Red Heart. I've tried other acrylic yarns, like the Just Yarn when I made Ross the Turkey. It didn't bother me as bad, but it's still kind of a very, it's soft, but it's not soft yarn. But it is what it is. But I'm not allergic to wool and I do not have any sensitivities to wool. And it doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother my skin as much. So I don't want to say I'm a yarn snob, but I do like my wools a lot. And I'm thinking if I can downsize my acrylic section by actually using it, then I don't have to buy as many bookcases. And that's going to save me a lot of money. So that's what I'm trying to do. So that's why I pulled for this project. So for this project, I have to use five colors that was selected during the live Everyone has to use these five colors. You can use any kind of brand of yarn or any base of yarn, but they have to be either for this project this month of the month of March, green, blue, orange, red, and yellow. Cannot be any kind of variegated yarn. It cannot be any kind of, um, I guess, can't have any other colors in it. It can't have any shades. It has to be like one shade. You have to choose a shade and that's the color that you have to use for your whole project. I think this month though has been a little bit harder because not only do we have to come up with like a single project, you have to come up with a, a bowl and three items that go in the bowl that are cohesive, only using the green, the blue, the orange, the yellow, and the red. I knew immediately what I wanted to make. But I'm learning through this process that it's really hard for me to stay in just those colors and just those shades. I like to make things that are very colorful and seeing the same color over and over is very boring to me. And since it's solid and not tonals, like it's just, <sighs> but I'm really loving what I'm making. So I'm just kind of pushing my way through because Mimi is going down. I am using some Red Heart with Love and I'm using some I Love This Yarn, which is a Hobby Lobby acrylic 
So this is the green that I chose. This is Emerald, Emrix, and it's color number 351. I got this a long time ago at a yard sale for a quarter. <laughs> so I was like, hey, we're gonna, we're gonna use this. It's a good deal. I'm also using, what is this? This is the Red Heart with Love. And look at this label, y'all. <laughs> this is one of the first yarns I've ever bought. And this is called Bluebell. So there's that. And then I am using Red Heart with Love Holly Berry. This is a really bright, fun red. And then I'm using, this is Red Heart with Love Mango. Yes. Mango. And it's this really pretty orange. It's not like the carrot orange. It's kind of more of a duller orange to me. I don't know. And then this little bit is my Red Heart with Love Daffodil. Which just so happens to be discontinued. And this is the main... This is one of the main colors I need. And this is all I got left. I've already completed one aspect. Just gonna say aspect of my project. And so I'm starting the other main aspect today. And I'm hoping I have enough yarn because I even looked online and I cannot find where to order anymore. So if I run out of yarn, I'm really not sure how this is gonna work, but I'm gonna try to make it work. So these are my colors together. Let's see if I can show them. Oh, there we go. But I am enjoying this project. It's been a lot of fun. It's been very challenging. For the most part, I am using some patterns that I found to kind of fill in what I needed to do. But for one aspect, I kind of found this really cute pattern and it was not in English. It was like in Swedish. And so I just had to look at it and like guesstimate what the pattern would be to make this. And then I had, I just did the rest of it freehand. I wish I wrote down the directions because I love it. Like so much love it. <laughs> this is so cute. And yeah, I'm excited to get this done. And once I get it done and once I get on that live and I talk about it and I win, I will come back and make a video and showing you what I completed if you don't catch the live because it's it's gonna be cute. I think it's gonna be cute. Let me just say that. I don't know. Another active whip that I'm whipping up is in this bag. This where is this from? This is a bag by Awesome Granny. I don't even know where this string is from. It's just attached to me now. But it's so cute. It's got hot air balloons. But this is my shawl. And this is actually my entry for the Knitting Turnpike and Judy Creations make-along. And I'm only this far. <laughs> but I really like it. I keep messing up. I keep, like, forgetting to do two rows of this, this lace, which is just an eyelet section. And I just keep forgetting to do it. And so I'll, I'll do one row and then I'll go all the way and I'm getting to switch colors. And then I'm like, oh no. So then I have to rip out like all those. And I just rip out the needles because it's faster. Re-cake it up or actually just kind of wind it up. And that's why my cake looks like this. And then re-knit it because it's just, it's not that hard to pick up and there's not that many stitches. <sighs> I want to really focus on this and I want to get this done because I really want this kind of, it's not really a shawl and it's not really a scarf. It's more of a stole because of the width of it. And once this thing blocks because it's done in garter stitch, it's going to be super squishy licious and it can really block out a lot if I want it to, but I don't think I'm going to aggressively block it. I just want to block it enough that my eyelets pop because this is natural fiber. These are leftovers. I'm pretty sure, and I think these are gifted to me. These are Malintosh yarns or Malabrigo sock. I think they're Malintosh. I really think they're Malintosh. And I don't know the colorway names. Actually, I do. This one is Seldon because I'm actually using this exact same color because I held them up together in my last year's 
no, my two years ago, Stephen West shawl that I'm still knitting on. Twist and Turns is the name of that one. And it's just exactly like that. This one, I don't know what it is, but I just love it so much because it's these purples and pinks and it's just absolutely stunning. And then with that, I am pairing some three Irish girls. They're another indie dyer. I have their tag somewhere. And this is the colorway Cullen Lace. It is, this is a 65% Merino, 35% Bamboo. And it's just really pretty. It has both of these colors in there. So I think they're gonna, well, somewhat, that purple's a little bit different. And then with that, also I found this Cascade Heritage yarn in this purple. I have a couple of these. These were, I think I bought at a dish dot. I, blah, blah, blah. I get so tongue tied today. I think I got these from a dish stash. A D stash. Why can't I say that word? I got these from a D stash. But I think with all of them together, it's going to be quite nice. And I'm not really following the pattern as far as color placement. It's kind of written more of a recipe anyways, from what I can tell. And so I have in my mind how this thing's going to look. I just need to get it to that completed finished line. <laughs> and at this rate, it's not going very fast. I do have my really cute Hello Kitty needle toppers on them. Aren't they adorable? I love Hello Kitty. The last thing I am actively somewhat working on which I'm really not actively working on it because ever since I put the post up I haven't touched it so I made this short and let me tell you I am blown away by how many people have actually commented on this and given this a thumbs up so thankful for you like y'all have made my day but you've also made this so hard because I'm getting so many great ideas on the eyes as well as reasoning for why the eye should be away. So I have been, I haven't even finished this poor Imkin because I just keep replacing his eyeballs and <laughs> looking at them and trying to figure out what I want him to be. I'm definitely going to make more Imkins, so it's not like I can't just use the eye suggestions and another Imkin, but I was trying them out with the big eyes and then I was trying them out with mixed match eyes and I was trying them out with small eyes and he's still he's still trying to figure out what he wants to be so he can let me know and i'm still really enjoying your comments and your suggestions on that post but i do need to finish him and get him off my hooks and out of my whip pile so let's talk about what i have planned for the month of april because yeah april for me is going to be all about the booty <laughs> booties actually and that is for my baby booties make along that I posted about in this video. If you would like to make some baby booties and send them to me, I would be greatly appreciative and I would add them on my community post or I will make a video talking about the ones that you've sent me. There will definitely be a video made with when I have the worldwide knit and crochet in public event in June and I will show all of them. But if you send me baby booties, I will put them on my community post so everyone else can see them and celebrate them and all their cuteness. But I am going to be making some baby booties and I have started a pair because I was recording a video to help Lori get through the Kelks Keeks booty and I had started it and I had recorded it and then I realized that my phone memory was full so I moved all of the photos and videos of things that I've been working on for future videos and and a video this video actually had already been recorded and edited and I put them on a hard drive to bring out here to upload and edit on my Mac. Upon doing that, I <laughs> was picking up the portable hard drive and it fell a foot and a half from the floor and it broke. So my husband's gonna definitely try to save those because it had all the backups and all the footage from every video on this channel on there where I've worked on it. But right now, as of now, all that's just gone. <laughs> So that stinks, 
but I'm going to re remake these and record that process and just do kind of like a highlight. It is a free pattern, but it's still a copyright protected pattern. So I can't do a full tutorial on them, but I can show you highlights and how to do like a stitch or something. And that is what I'm going to do. But I will be focusing on all of the booties for the month of April. I also really would like to finish another little project. I want to I want to knit something, which I know I'm going to be knitting booties, but I want to knit like something, something. So my whole month of April, I really want to knit and work on this shawl. I would really like to get it off my needles because that's not the only shawl I have on my needles. I have quite a few shawls on my needles. I tend to be a shawlaholic. This will be my fourth shawl currently in progress. One of them is a crochet and I really need to get it done. But I have all these things I want to make. Also for the month of April, I have a cute little decor item I want to make for out here and it should go pretty fast. It's it's bulky weight yarn. But bulky weight yarn is not something that I typically use so it feels very awkward for me to knit art or crochet with it. I, I really tend to stay up under a worsted weight or lower and so I'm kind of excited about it but I'm kind of not excited about it because it just feels so so weird. Let's talk about shed updates while we're here. You may notice that I am sitting in a different location and that is because I have rearranged the studio a little bit. It felt very crowded on that side where the bigger window is. And I realized that I really love that standing desk that has that bar stool where I do a lot of lives sometimes in the past. I may start doing lives here. I don't know, it just feels more cozier. And so I wanted another standing workspace because I do like to stand. I don't like to sit around. So I moved this red desk from that side of the room to this side of the room and I moved my winding station over on the other side of the room. And that's kind of what I made my standing desk out of. I went to Lowe's and they had these big, I think they're called work wood slabs or something. And I got one, I bought actually bought three of them and brought them home to see which one fit better in the space. They, the, the most expensive one was $24. Ironically, that's the one that I decided to keep, go figure. But it was still a little bit too long. So I chopped off four inches from it to make it fit in that space better. And I absolutely love it. It did allow me to also spread out my winder and my Swift a little bit more. And I think that's gonna also make it easier to wind they don't really need to be very close together when you're winding because you can get like a lot of spin back on them. So if they're a little bit farther away, it does help your winding process go a little bit more smoother. And I do have a video on this channel that I kind of talk about how I wind yarns and that was part of a Vlogtober episode. I'll link that down below too if you're interested. Also, we started under, well, I, I say we, I was not here for that process. My husband and my oldest son started underpinning the shed and he got done with it. All he has to do is go back and put the trim on the top part so you can't see where the top of the metal is. And the next step is going to be getting my AC and heater unit because they're on sale right now at the end of the month. And we have a coupon, go coupons at Lowe's. So we may be doing that and I'm really excited about that because it's starting to get warm in Alabama. Right now it's only 66 degrees, but it got close to 80 the other day. My ceiling fan and having two cross windows open was pretty sufficient in keeping the air circulating and it was very comfortable out here, but that's not gonna be that way for long. It's gonna get to the point where it's just brutal sauna weather and the air conditioning is gonna be very, very important to have. So looking forward to that. And then after that, the next big project will be getting the front porch built, the deck, which super excited about that because I can't wait to bring over my little table and chairs that he bought me last year. And also when it's raining, it's kind of hard to get in and not track in mud because I have to walk across the front yard. I'm a little much of a freak show when it comes to stuff on the floor. I'm constantly vacuuming out here. It's so nice to have a space that stays clean because <laughs> my kids aren't leaving things everywhere. I love you children if you see this. And thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you spending some of your very precious time with me. And I hope my videos bring you joy or put a smile on your face. And until next time, know that you are loved. And I really hope you take the time to craft up something and put some joy in your day. Bye.